Well, thanks for joining us here on the Market Day Report on a Tuesday. Sometimes we call it Crop Progress Tuesday, and I'm pleased to be joined by Brian Hoops, the president of Midwest Market Solutions. He hails from Springfield, Missouri, and there he is right there via Skype today. We're going to try uh, a little new approach here, Brian. Good to see you and talk with you here. So how are you doing out there in Missouri? Hey, I'm doing great. It's uh, kind of fun to do this over Skype. I'm actually up in Iowa this week uh, visiting some clients and, and uh, branch offices there. So I've driven a lot of the state this week over from uh, Storm Lake, where our office is, to Cedar Rapids and north up to the Minnesota border. And there is a lot of field work being done over the weekend in the last uh, couple days. Tremendous amount of uh, corn being planted and uh, just overall field work being done. If corn's been seeded, uh, there is actually able to see some rows of corn by water and uh, a lot of uh, soybeans going in the ground at this time as well. I wanted to get your thoughts, and we can take a look at the national uh, planning progress numbers from yesterday, but the corn was, uh, by most analyst measures, a uh, little further ahead than what we expected to see on planning progress. And soybeans actually made a little bit of progress last week as well. What did you think of the numbers when they came out? It, the corn number was very close to the number we had submitted. We put in 48% figuring that we'd have a lot of uh, field work being done because it was such a nice weekend in, in the areas of Iowa and Minnesota and parts of Dakotas, Nebraska that had been really slow. And uh, they were going to catch up with some very active uh, activity here in the last couple of days. Now, we are uh, expecting to see more activity being done here this week. And I think we'll catch up to that normal pace by the time we get to uh, next week's crop progress numbers. So these numbers really are not any, anything bullish, I would say. And uh, with the open weather this week, we're going to make a lot more progress here in the next uh, seven days. So it's interesting. Let's take a look at our board price, and uh, we'll walk through the corn and soybean and wheat markets here with everybody and uh, see how we're trading right now. Now, remember, we have the major reports coming up tomorrow from uh, USDA. It'll be the supply and demand report and the crop production report. So on the corn right now, we have July trading three quarters higher at uh, 366 and three quarters. We're kind of in the middle of our trading range here today, about a penny off our low of the day. We backed up off of our high by about uh, almost three cents now. December new crop corn up three quarters at 385. And if you look at the soybean trade right now, you have your July contract up eight at 972 and three quarters. And you have November six higher at 967 and a quarter. Brian, is that just because of the rapid corn planting progress? That means maybe fewer soybean acres than had been feared then? I think that's kind of what the market's reacting to. The soybean, soybean planting pace a little bit slower than expected. And if we're going to get this corn crop in the ground, we are likely to see uh, maybe even more corn acres than what we had expected. And, and that could be meaning less soybean acres. So it's, you know, soybean market's been a lot stronger technically than the wheat or than the uh, corn market has been. The soybeans have actually broken their downtrend line, traded closed above it and, and pulled back here again. And this is without much in the way of any fundamental support. So we're seeing some short covering in the soybeans ahead of the, the growing season that we're not seeing in the corn and the soy and the wheat markets, excuse me. And I do need to point out that in Malaysia, the palm oil futures are at a one month high. Also, uh, canola, uh, they're having a hard time getting the uh, canola crop uh, planted uh, this time, running behind uh, schedule. So uh, July canola up two and a half dollars in Canadian money today at 528. So that's supportive as well. On the wheat trade, as we go to Chicago wheat, we have July now down three and a quarter at 430 and a quarter. Kansas City, we have July now trading at 441. That's down three and a quarter cents. And in Minneapolis spring wheat trade, we have July currently down three at 541 and three quarters. Uh, on the cotton market, we'll take a quick peek there. We have July now unchanged at 7479. Most of the other months just slightly higher. So that's, uh, that's actually the October, I'm sorry, July up 32 points right now. Uh, we'll pause for a little break here, Brian, and I'll bring you back and we'll talk about our livestock trade on the other side of these messages. Come on back. We are joined by Brian Hoops, the president of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. He happens to be on the road, and he's talking to us via Skype from Iowa uh, today. And uh, he's been on the road kind of scouting out fields and 
and looking the situation over as far as how planning is going in the Western Corn Belt. Also, I want to talk with you, Brian, about our livestock trade here. Now, this is uh, not for the timid in the livestock markets these days. Let's take a look at our live cattle trade. Right now, we have the June live cattle trading a dollar higher at 128.72. So we're about 90 cents away from our high. We are 90 cents above our low. We have August up a dollar 15 at 124.40, and October up 74 at 119.82. On the feeder cattle side, uh, right now you have your May down 48, but all the other months just slightly higher. We have been on both sides of unchanged. We have had well over a three dollar trading range here in that August contract, about three and a half dollars to be exact. Uh, the August contract at 156.70 now is just a nickel higher, kind of stuck in the middle. Uh, we have the September uh, now trading 35 higher at 156.30. Meanwhile, on the lean hog trade, we currently have the May contract up 70 and June. Now, basically a dollar higher, it's up 99 cents. They say it's 78.37. So that's only about uh, three cents from its high of the day. All right, Brian, your thoughts on what we're seeing taking place here in the cattle market and the hog market. For one thing, the hogs have been really uh, uh, showing a good, strong performance on the charts here for about the last two weeks now. Yeah, very strong uh, cash markets in the hogs, giving us some rally there. The seasonals are higher for about another week. When farmers go to the fields, they turn, kind of turn their attention towards field work and away from hog marketing. And that's usually a case where we see a lot of strength in the cash markets, which I think is what we're seeing going on right now. And in the cattle sector, it is a volatile market. You know, we had a lot of uh, open interest, a lot of longs needed to be liquidated as a Goldman roll started on Friday, limit down conditions. And we saw that effects so of that Goldman and roll yesterday where all the contracts moved higher except for June. Now, what they want to do is move out of their long June positions into another month, August or October, is most likely where they're going to buy back into. So we're seeing a little bit of weakness in June compared to those other months, and that's because funds selling out of June and buying into another month. So for our viewers and listeners, how long does that Goldman roll normally take to get completed? Well, we just got another couple days. So by Wednesday, it should be pretty much completed. I think we saw early this morning where June actually took a leadership role on the upside as uh, this Goldman roll will start to lose power and effect as the days goes on. So maybe even by the close today, uh, we'll kind of get to the point where we're not really trading that Goldman roll any longer. We go back to looking at the big discount that June has to the cash markets and watching the cutout values to see if they continue to be strong. All right, Brian, good to visit with you. Thanks for all the information today, and uh, we look forward to talking with you again. Safe travels while you're on the road today. Great talking with you. Thanks so much. All right, thanks, Brian. Brian Hoops, president of Midwest Market Solutions, on the road in Iowa, checking in live today via Skype. On the road. Look at that technology. It's so nice to see love it, an analyst you? talk. Yeah, I love it, because then yeah. you can watch their eyes as and well. We, we uh, <laughs> encourage a lot more folks to uh, do that as well. Yeah, so, definitely. That'd be great. It adds a whole other element. Thank you.